Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. I'm so happy to meet you again uh, in the second case of echocardiographic finding in COVID-19 pneumonia. We received a case of severe COVID-19 pneumonia from the medical ward. Patient is known case of DM hypertension. And while being in medical ward, he developed severe short breath and severe O2 saturation. O2 saturation dropped to 70% on 15 liter of breathing mass. He was emergently intubated in the medical ward and admitted to our ICU. On admission to ICU, he was fully sedated with thrust scale minus four, blood pressure 105 over 65, heart rate 160 uh, per minute regular sinus. Investigation revealed high inflammatory marker, LDH, C-reactive protein, high CBK, high CBK MBB, lymphopenia, and increased blood sugar. Critical care ultrasound done for the first day. You see tachycardia, inferior vena cava is full, but because of tachycardia and the positive uh, 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 beep, the positive, uh, ventilation, positive pressure ventilation and the beep, you cannot judge really in fear vena cava with this uh, too much tachycardia. Uh, lung, there is subpleural consolidation, confluent and the dense B line all over, denoting severe uh, COVID-19 pneumonia and ARDS. We did uh, full cardiac examination, this subcostal view, right side is not dilated, left side is weak, weak ejection fraction, visual assessment almost 20%. Not dilated right side, weak left side. Let us see another view. Long axis parasternal view, as you see here, inferior lateral wall is contracting, hypokinetic but contracting, uh, basal septum contracting, but you see here ballooning and the akinesia of the apex, ballooning and the akinesia of the apex, very apparent in this view. In Four chamber view, as you see here, also basal contracting, but the apex and apical part of the septum and lateral wall is akinetic, akinetic, completely akinetic and akinesia. Really, picture of Takutsubu syndrome, a real picture of Takutsubu syndrome with basal contraction and the apical akinesia. Uh, but uh, the most uh, again, Apparent thing here, there is one important thing, this left atria, it's, it seems not dilated. The volume of left atrium, it seems to be so low in this patient. It's very apparent, you see here, very, very low left atrial volume. And picture of Takotsubo, really, versus uh, uh, extensive myocardial function. No significant valve lesion. Okay, now, now this patient has very bad ejection fraction and very bad systolic function. You are talking about ejection fraction almost 10% with picture of Takutsubo. We need to check in this very uh, small left atrium, we need to check the diastolic function of the patient in this situation because it's very important to give fluid or not to give fluid in this patient with severe heart failure because it's very important point in, in ICU and in our management. But we should uh, accurately uh, assess the diastolic function and the left atrial pressure in this patient. According to this great American Society of Echocardiography and the European Association of Cardiovascular Imaging Guideline about the diastolic function 2016, uh, this patient has low ejection fraction, that has myocardial disease. So the first step you need to look for mitral inflow E and the A ratio. If it's more than or equal to two, that means it's grade three with increased left, left atrial pressure. You will not give flows in this situation. If E over A ratio is less than or equal 0.8 and the E wave velocity less than or equal 50 centimeter per second, it is normal left atrial pressure and the grade one that's source function. And you can give challenge IV fluids here and look for the response of the patient. If it's not there and there, you need to search in this area about this three parameter. Okay, let us see E over A ratio of the patient. Really, 
because of tachycardia it's very difficult to differentiate between e and a so in this situation we need to uh, look for three parameters here uh, average e over e prime e which is uh, diastolic uh, passive diastolic feeling of uh, left ventricle and the e prime d is the tissue doppler of the mitral valve uh, whether uh, uh, medial uh, annulus or lateral annulus and tricuspid valve regurgitation velocity and left atrial volume index per square meter if two of these parameter is negative not fulfilling the criteria it is grade 1 that's its function and normal left atrial pressure if two of these parameter is positive you are going to grade 2 the source function and increase left atrial pressure okay you see here, really, I cannot differentiate between E and A wave here because of rapid uh, heart rate. And here is the uh, tissue doubler of the mitral valve annulus, lateral uh, mitral valve annulus. But look for this fluctuation of the velocity in both mitral uh, flow velocity and the uh, tissue doubler here. Marked fluctuation, significant fluctuation here, really, with mechanical breath. And as you see here, Bardo in tissue doubler, significant fluctuation with mechanical breath. With very low uh, left atrial uh, volume, you should consider a fluid responsive state. And we can uh, confirm this by uh, LVOT, VTI, or maximum velocity of LVOT velocity here. As you see here, in this situation, it's 86. And you can see in this with inspiration, it reached almost 100. So... There is 15 percent variability of LVOT maximum velocity with mechanical ventilation denoting fluid responsive state. And when we uh, complete the diastolic, the diastolic function here, as you see, left atrial volume is very low. Left atrial volume index is 15 per square meter, and no mitral regurgitation, no tricuspid regurgitation, no significant tricuspid regurgitation. That means we have two parameter negative which is small left atrial volume less than 34 milli per square meter and might and the tricuspid regurgitation maximum velocity less than 2.8 that means this patient has grade one diastolic dysfunction with normal left atrial pressure moreover he has a criteria of fluid response responsiveness by a marked fluctuation and significant fluctuation of post uh, mitral valve flow and LVOT maximum velocity more than 15%. So this patient really is fluid responsiveness despite this severe left ventricular dysfunction and he has normal left atrial pressure and at the same time has a criteria of fluid responsiveness or mechanical bits. To sum up, Severe COVID-19 pneumonia, DM, hypertension, severe left ventricular fa failure, left ventricular failure, the assumed function grade 1, and the fluid responsive state. Differential diagnosis. This is a common differential diagnosis in this situation with severe COVID pneumonia, stress myopsy, Takutsubu syndrome, acute extensive anterior myocardial infarction, and the COVID-19 induced myocarditis. The ECG uh, really, there is no apparent Q. As you see here, there is very small R, very small R, and there is poor R wave progression, non specific ST uh, wave changes here. It's more going with uh, Takutsubu more than extensive myocardial infarction. And you see in this great site of Palmacret, uh, the, 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 the main uh, parameter and the main investigation to differentiate between the three is the cardiac MRI as you see here myocardial infarction typically show late gadolinium enhancement in focal subendocardial or transmural distribution in myocarditis typically show late gadolinium enhancement in batch distribution but in Takutsubo cardiomyopathy typically has no late gadolinium enhancement this is a gold standard to differentiate between two between the three uh, non-invasively but really if you suspect the uh, acute myocardial infarction, uh, coronary catheterization is the mass in this situation. We started our protocol for COVID-19 ARDS. 
انترفيرون بيتا 1 بي ريبافيرين لوبينافير تونافير ستيرويد ويجيب ثرابيوتيك دوز انوكتوبارين اند اسبرين هير بيكوز ذا بيشنت هاز جريت 1 داسول ديسفانكشن اند هيز فلويد ريسبونسفنس باي سيجنيفيكانت فاريابيلتي اوف ال في او تي ماكسيما فيروستي اند سيجنيفيكانت فلكتويشن اوف ذا مايتر اند اورتيك فلو ويز ميكانيكال بريس ويز بوست ميكانيكال بريس وي جيف اي في تشالنجز وي ستارت تو بيوتامين 2.5 microgram per kg and noradrenaline 5 mic per minute there is very important point here i need to clarify also in this patient uh, as regard the management why we give uh, low dose dobutamine and uh, noradrenaline because really as you see here in this patient with five chamber view as you see in this five chamber view there is no lv ot dynamic obstruction There is no dynamic obstruction of the left ventricular outflow tract here. As you see, the, the pathway is very clear here. So you can give very small doses of uh, dobutamine and watch the response. So we give small dose dobutamine and not adrenaline. Next day, he has boosted balance of 2.5 liter, repeated critical care echo. As you see, interior vena cava with induced breath, with uh, assisted breath, there is some collapse of the interior vena cava. You see here great improvement of the uh, basal segment contractility, great improvement of the basal segment contractility, really. Improved within 24 hours after IV flow is undressed. You see, this is the five chamber view. Start in apex to contract. There is still akinesia, but uh, a great improvement really within short time. Uh, it's going with uh, Takutsubo. You can compare between both here. This is day one. This is day one. And this is day two. Definitely there is sickening here. There is sickening here. And Definitely, there is a, a response, significant response, denoting uh, attack with Sue syndrome uh, in this patient. We did, he start, we can now can differentiate between E and A here, Brian, and the, the medial mitral value under stage of all, the E over A, A prime. Uh, you are talking about. Here is 9 and here is 97. You are talking about uh, less than 10, still low. With rapid improvement, it was most probably stress mobility, and you should consider stress mobility differential diagnosis severe acute heart failure in COVID-19 pneumonia. Really, most of the cases of severe left ventricular failure in COVID-19 pneumonia, which I have seen, it is due to stress mobility and improved very uh, even in yeah, 24 hours, they improve and improved very quickly. In this European Journal of Case Report in Internal Medicine, you will see there is several patients affected by COVID-19 pneumonia may develop stress cardiomyopathy, also known as a Kutsubo syndrome, at different stages during the disease with different degree of lipid dysfunction. This is well known as a complication of COVID-19. And thank you for watching. We we'll see you in another uh, echocardiographic criteria of COVID-19 pneumonia. Bye-bye.